Chapter 18 is entitled Managing Waste and the topic is called Municipal Solid Waste, the abbreviation is MSW. So garbage would be the layperson's term for what we're talking about in this chapter, um, solid waste. This is a different from liquid waste which is the sewer system of a municipality. Another acronym that I want to discuss here, the book uses it here on page 252, the last line of paragraph 2, NIMBY. NIMBY stands for not in my backyard. Uh, as I point out, a little grammatical point, backyard spelled as two separate words as a noun and backyard spelled as one word is an adjective. So the notion of not in my backyard or a NIMBY problem is when people agree that a certain public, especially public project is necessary, let's say a new landfill, but nobody wants to have the new landfill close to their house, they want the new landfill put close to other people's houses. And NIMBY is sometimes used, or very, actually fairly often used in a derogatory way to criticize the people who are fighting against, let's say, a new landfill. I'm not sure this is completely appropriate. It's completely rational for people to not want to live close to a landfill if that's going to have environmental disamenities, it's going to reduce their property values. So I'm not sure that that one should actually, uh, to what extent one should criticize people who are taking a NIMBY point of view, but it is generally understood in a pejorative sense. The, the next point that the book makes here is that this problem, the problem of studying municipal solid waste is an understudied problem. We think that typically waste disposal services are underpriced and the reason is we don't have a lot of information about waste disposal. Waste disposal tends to be a local government function and so even state governments don't have very really good data on it, let alone uh, national governments. And because of this so-called information failure, because of this lack of data, there's also, the textbook authors claim, an analytical failure, which is that there are not many people like professors who study municipal solid waste because they can't get data on it. Because, as I said, it is more of a local responsibility. So this is a problem that faces the analysis of municipal solid waste, is that we, we don't have a lot of analysis on it and there isn't good data. One quick minor point I want to make here uh, on page 254. This is not a diagram that you have to look at, but in case you do, um, you B prime, A prime, and D prime, the prime there, the prime symbol there no, denotes derivatives. In other words, marginal units. Uh, d Notating derivatives with primes is quite common in mathematics and in science. So let's turn out to the substance. How can you control municipal solid waste using command and control? Um, command and control really hasn't been used for municipal solid waste. What has been used is some kind of soft command and control called recycling targets. When we think of command and control, we think of a legally binding limit on how much, let's say, pollution you can generate. Whereas a target is just an aspirational goal, a suggestion, something that would be nice to achieve, but it's not necessary to achieve. And municipal solid waste has been subject to targets, but not so much to literal quotas. Now, how, why did I mention recycling here? Well, um, you know, the target could be we're going to reduce the amount of stuff that goes to the landfill a certain amount, but the target 
could also be recycling because recycling is one of the most important ways that you can reduce stuff that goes to the landfill. So they're not exactly the same thing. There are other, another, there are other ways of reducing what goes to the landfill even if you don't recycle or beyond recycling. One is simply to use less stuff in the first place. But recycling is still one of the main ways to reduce what goes to landfills. I wanted to talk just a little bit about the history of recycling in Salt Lake County. Recycling in Salt Lake County, and by this I mean outside of Salt Lake City and other municipalities, the what used to be called the unincorporated county, was optional and extra cost before 2008. So if you want to get a recycling bin in Salt Lake County, they are blue, you had to pay extra money for it, and, you, and, and it was optional. If you didn't want to pay extra money, then you just had a garbage can and you threw everything in your garbage can. So this was act, this actually made it harder to recycle and costly to recycle. Now I write that it's similar to green waste now. Again, I'm more familiar with Salt Lake County's regulations rather than Salt Lake City's. Green waste is waste like tree branches, tree leaves in the fall, uh, organic material that can uh, can degrade and be used as mulch or can uh, can be sub can be subject to degra natural degradation, and uh, and then the the uh, county can sell it as mulch. You might think that municipal governments would want to encourage people to separate green waste from other waste because the governments can uh, sell the product after natural decomposition, but that's not the case in Salt Lake. Uh, county right now. It's all I can right now. If you want to have a green waste container, it's optional and extra cost, just like any kind of recycling container was before 2008. Should also mention that there were large changes in the worldwide recycling markets that started to happen circa 2018. Before th then, lots of mixed stream recycling, that is recycling where you put all the recycled materials together and it's all jumbled up. Lots of that was exported to China. And then in China, uh, the different types of recyclables, the paper versus aluminum versus steel, for example, versus plastics, were all separated out of the mixed up recycling stream. This is a very labor intensive process and China decided in 2018 it the Chinese government decided in 2018 it didn't want to do it didn't want Chinese people to do this anymore so all of a sudden it wasn't possible to export the recycling stream to China uh, you might wonder about transportation costs but China exports lots of stuff to the US and so there were lots of container ships going back to China across the Pacific Ocean almost empty and therefore uh, the owners of these sh ships did not charge a lot of money to people who wanted to send things back on these ships to China, including to recycling firms. Once China pulled out of this market, it became much harder to find countries willing to accept recycling. And that has meant that recycling has become much more expensive, and some municipalities in the U.S. have stopped or or decrease their recycling programs because of these changes. I think we'll discuss the rest of Chapter 18 in another video.